I'm Esmeralda Tovar, and I design computer programming activities at the Tech Interactive. I'll be your guide as we program butterfly algorithms on Scratch. Before we get started on programming or coding, let's first orient ourselves with this landing page. So on the left-hand side, you can see that this is the stage. So this is what's going to show all of our code. Um, and on the right-hand side, we have the instructions. So first it says, run the program. Can you tell what's missing? Second, click see inside and check out the code. And the three, it says, finish the code to show the phases of a monarch butterfly life cycle. So let's take a look by running the program and you run the program by clicking the green flag right here. So let's click on that. We have Gobo who's talking about, let's looking at the butterfly life cycle and it says click the space bar to continue. So once the space bar is clicked, we are taken here and this is the slider that we are able to move. So let's move it. This is phase one, phase two. Oh, phase three seems to still be a caterpillar. Phase four still seems to be a caterpillar. So I think we now know what phases are missing. So we have phase one, phase two, but we are missing phase three and we are missing phase four. So let's click see inside. And once you do, you want to make sure that any changes are saved to your own account. So what I invite you to do now is to actually sign in. So if you have an account, make sure that you sign in on the right hand side. If you don't, then go ahead and join Scratch. It's very easy. You just need an email, a username, and a password. So I'm going to sign in. This is my username and my password. So once I sign in, there is an option up at the top where it says Remix, the screen button. And I'm going to click on it. And now I have made my own copy. At the very top, it says Butterfly Algorithms Remix. And maybe I'm going to change this to be my, my last name, so Ms. Tovar, because it's going to be for my class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way to the right and I'm going to select this very first frame. So when I do that, you can see that now the coding area is a lot larger and then my stage is a lot smaller. Below the stage is where your sprites are located. So these are the images that you're going to be looking at. So we're not gonna do much changing here on Gobo. We wanna go to the life cycle sprite. So when you click on that, there should be a lot more blocks or a lot more code that you're looking at. When we look at the very beginning where we see this comment right here, it says use the blocks on the right to code the monarch butterfly's life cycle. So these are the blocks that you will be needing. Before we get started on actual coding, let's go through this section to understand what's happening. When spacebar key is pressed, the image or that sprite is going to go to 11.7. And this is the coordinates that it's appearing. And then it's showing, because if you remember from the very beginning, we weren't able to see the caterpillar or the eggs. We also have some variables right here. So we're setting the phase, which is our variable to one. And then we're showing uh, the variable. So that slider that you see over here, we want to see it. And if we scroll down, we have forever right here. 
This forever is necessary because we want to be able to go back and forth and have it be that when it's at one, it shows the egg. So this is this forever block. Then once we go inside, we have our conditional blocks. So we have if phase equals to one, then you're gonna switch the costume to the monarch egg. And if you click on this, there's going to be lots of different options that uh, we have added to the program. So that's the very first phase. Again, you go down to the next one. If phase equals the two, then switch costume to the caterpillar since that's the second phase of a butterfly. And if you notice, we only have the first two phases right here. So we need to add phase three and phase four. So if you wanna use the blocks on the side, go ahead and see if you see any patterns. So what I can see is that pretty much this is what I'm changing, but it's staying the same. So I'm going to add the if then block underneath the second one, but if you see it's it's in between this forever block. So when I do that, I now know I need my operator block, which is this green one. And the key thing, it can be a little finicky, but you want it to highlight. So if you see that highlighting, you want it to highlight and drop it. And now again, I'm using my patterns. Phase goes to the left. So I'm getting one of the phases. These are a little bit trickier, but again, you want it to highlight on the left and it's highlighting, so I'm dropping it. And here you can use the numbers on your keyboard and we're gonna go to phase three. Once it's in phase three, we want our sprite costume to switch. So we have the egg, the caterpillar, the third one, would be a cocoon. Once we have that, we can test it. We wanna only test the section just to see if it works. So what I can do is I can select the when spacebar key is pressed. And if you see it highlights it yellow, this yellow right here, it means it's trying it. So that means that I can move this and phase three should become a cocoon. So let's try that. We're at phase one, phase two is a caterpillar, phase three is a cocoon. That means our code works. Let's see what happens to phase four. Oh, looks like we still need to fix phase four. So. Again, go back to it. And this is where you would have your own students. So you would do phase three together, and then you would have them as a class or individually, depending on your students' skills, code that last phase. Once you've coded the fourth conditional, you want to make sure that the full program actually runs. So let's view it in a big screen. And the way to do that is go all the way to the right. And these arrows, when you click on it, it goes to full screen mode. So let's run this from the beginning. So now we know that our program is fully functioning.